If you've been watching the real estate industry news, I am certain you are aware that the National Association of Realtors was recently in a lawsuit. They lost and they came to a settlement that's going to create some big changes in how business is done starting this month in August 17th. So I'm actually excited by these changes um, and I want to create this video to break down how these changes impact you as a buyer or as a homeowner trying to sell in Austin, Texas. I also want to look at some of the news headlines and bust some myths and really break down what are the truths and some of the myths and exaggerations that we're seeing on the news that are kind of scaring some people. So stay tuned for this video and I'm going to break down everything you need to know if you're planning to make a move in Austin in the next year. So before we dive into these changes, I want to just break down the crucial parts of a real estate transaction. There's basically three contracts that govern any real estate transaction. So on one side, you have a listing agreement. This is going to be, be between a listing agent and a homeowner or a seller is how I'm going to describe them as a seller. This agreement allows that agent to market the home, to do everything, to put it out to the public, but to also attract a buyer's agent who is bringing a buyer. That's the second piece is you need a buyer's agent and the contract between a buyer's agent and their client is called a buyer representation agreement. Now I I've always used these, but some States have never used them. I have always used these and been required to by my brokers for every transaction I've ever done. So this is nothing new for us. Um, and I will explain some of the differences that have occurred on this form. Now you've got the two parties and you've got a seller and a buyer. The contract in the middle is what we're ultimately hoping for. And this is a contract between the seller and the buyer to purchase and sell that home. So you've got a listing agent and a buyer's agent. You're trying to bring both clients together so that they are happy and they buy and sell that home. Another crucial fact that you need to understand is that 89% of the real estate transactions that happened in 2023 used real estate agents. So the vast majority of buyers and sellers are choosing to get agents to represent them because it's a big financial decision. It's a complicated legal transaction. They want guidance and support throughout that transaction. So only a small minority, 11% chose to just go it on their own. Um, there are people that might choose to sell their own home. There are people that might be you know, happy walking into a home unrepresented, but 89% of people chose to use real estate agents. That's important to keep in mind too because the headlines are saying things like there's the end of buyer's agents. I've even seen stuff on social media and to me it's crazy. It's like, so we're going to have listing agents listing homes, but no one's showing the homes. No one's helping people buy the homes. That doesn't make sense. You always have a seller and a buyer. You're always going to have a listing agent and a buyer's agent. So keep that in mind as we talk about these changes. Now I'm going to dive into the listing agreement first. And even if you're watching this video and you're thinking, well, I'm not selling a home. I, I don't even have a home. I'm trying to buy one. You do need to understand what sellers are being told and what the contract looks like when they're going to list their home, because it's going to impact the way you understand their listing and what you can expect when you make an offer. So let's dive into the listing agreement. Then I'm going to break down the buyer agreement and tell you where the key changes are. So in a listing agreement in the old way that we traditionally had it, the seller would pay the listing brokerage X amount percent of the sales price. And that was going to be their commission. Now that commission was usually split between a buyer brokerage. Now, part of the lawsuit had to do with the fact that some sellers in certain states had no idea that that commission was even being shared. Now in Texas, it was always explicitly stated that we're going to list our home with this percent of commission being offered to the listing brokerage. And there was a whole section in there that said they're going to take a certain amount and offer that as compensation or commission to a buyer's agent or a brokerage. So that was always split out differently in the Texas contract. So I feel like Texas is already a step ahead. Um, but in certain states, people had no idea that that was happening. 
The other thing that was upsetting people and part of the lawsuit as well is that they were being forced to offer a commission to a buyer's agent or to a buying brokerage. Sometimes you, you gotta think of the brokerage as the company that represents them and the agent is the specific person, that realtor who they hired to represent them from that company. So in the past, you had to put some kind of dollar amount on the multiple listing service, the MLS, that's where everyone syndicates and publishes their listings. So you couldn't just put zero and say, I don't wanna pay them. You had to put at least a dollar. All right, so the big change is now, instead of saying, I'm only gonna pay them a dollar, you can say, I don't wanna pay them anything. Now, some people are like, I didn't know I could pay them a dollar. It's always been negotiable. And so you could offer whatever you want. So how come people haven't just been doing that for the last several decades? Why haven't they just been saying, I'm only gonna give a buyer's agent a dollar? It's because they know that in order to sell their home, most home, home buyers have an agent representing them. This is a huge transaction, especially if it's your first time buying a home. So most people, 89% of people, are choosing to work with real estate agents. So offering a dollar is not going to be super helpful when you're trying to attract buyers who have agents to come buy your home. It's actually making your home less affordable. So let me break down what the options are now because the good thing after these changes, it's more transparency and more options, which is to me great for everyone. So the change now is there's different ways that you can offer some compensation and you also can say, no, I'm not gonna offer anything. The choice is yours, it's always been yours, but instead of a dollar, you can say zero. So right now, anything related to compensation is going to be drawn out with a big box around it and it's gonna be in bold face type. That way it's like in your face, you can't say, I didn't realize that, I didn't know it. It's in bold and it's in a giant box. So the choices here are um, when under contract at closing, the seller will pay the broker a certain amount. That could be a percentage. It could be a flat fee. It's whatever you come to terms with. You need to understand that just like any services that are offered, if you're going to a hairstylist, you're going to an accountant, you're going to an attorney, whatever, people charge different fees based on the quality of their service and their experience. So you want to choose who you're willing to pay for based on their value, their experience and their service to you. There's not like one set fee um, for agents. It varies based on their company, their qualifications and what they're offering to you. So you can come to terms with the agent and say, okay, I'm willing to offer a certain percent or a certain flat fee from that you can allow them to pay the other broker a certain fee or a certain percentage as well. And it's giving you just more choice if you wanna go that route. That's kind of similar to what was happening. The other thing is you can offer compensation um, just to the listing agent and not offer any compensation to the buying agent or brokerage. So on that note, it does say that you may be asked by the buyer to contribute an amount towards their buyer agent or to other fees, closing costs, and so on. So in some cases, what I'm actually telling my clients now who want to sell their homes is instead of specifying a certain amount, which is what you were required to do previously, you could leave it open and just know that again, 89% of people, if they're bringing an offer, they're going to have an agent who helped draft that offer. There's going to be some request to pay for compensation be open to it. There's probably a range that you could expect. Here's where most agents are asking for, for their um, compensation, for, for what they do, for their services. So just be prepared that if you get an offer, you're probably gonna see some requests for compensation and be open to it. But instead of saying, hey, I'm willing to offer this, who knows, maybe the agent was only gonna ask for this much for their fees. So why show your hand and offer more if you didn't really need to? It could be that the offer you get is lower than what you had hoped for, but you know what? Their agent fee is really low too. It could be that the agent fee, the compensation that they're asking for is really high, but the offer you got was like the highest offer. It was so good that you're like, I'm willing to pay that. So by keeping that open and not really specifying amount and just saying, hey, I'm open to considering offers that request some compensation, 
it gives you more choice again and more negotiating power. So that's how we're advising most of our clients. Not one client of mine who's listing their home has said, I'm gonna pay zero dollars and I'm not doing anything. Just like I've done over 200 transactions in my career and I've never had anyone offer a dollar. It just, you know, people will pay for the services and to get the transaction handled. People are willing to pay for the services to get the job done. So here's the other issue. If you're like, I adamantly am not paying anything, you have that right as well. It's all negotiable. You even don't have to pay for a listing agent to list your home. You can sell it yourself. There are a lot of people that, you know, again, 11%, there are some people that just say, I feel confident that I can sell my own home. They might be called a for sale by owner. That's the process. There's websites you can pay, you know, maybe a few hundred bucks and you put your own photos and everything out there and you try to sell it yourself. But 89% of people do choose to work with agents. But if you say, I adamantly am not paying anything to another, you know, another agent on the opposite side, you have that choice. In that case, you need to understand the impact of what that's going to do to the person that might want to buy your home because buyers are coming up with a lot of money to purchase your home. They need a down payment. They need um, lender fees. If they're getting a loan, they might have to pay HOA dues to get into the community. They have to prepay taxes. They have to prepay insurance. There can be other title fees. So they're coming up with a big lump sum out of pocket to purchase your home. If all the other homes in the area are offering compensation for their agents, but you're the only home that's not, it's just going to make their closing costs more expensive because now you're putting the burden on them and on top of all these down payments, everything, you're also going to have to pay the fees to your agent. Now that could be, you know, worked into the cost of the home, which is going to make your costs go a little higher. Or like I said, they might have to come up with more cash out of pocket. So that's why none of my clients are choosing to do that. They're realistic and they're like, we know that most people have an agent and we're willing to offer some compensation still knowing that most people are going to be bringing us an offer through an agent, but you do have that choice. Everything's negotiable. This is just making it more transparent and giving you more options. So the last big change related to the listing side of selling a home is that the offer of compensation is not going to be included anywhere on the MLS. So that's just an extra phone call for me to call up an agent and say, Hey, my client likes this home. Are you offering is the seller offering any kind of compensation? And we'll just have to ask instead of it being easy to see easy for the public to see that's now going to be hidden. And we just have to call them and find out that information. Now let's move on to the buyer side, the buyer representation agreement. So again, in some states, these have not been used or really put into effect. I've always used a buyer representation agreement. So I feel like I'm way ahead of a lot of these changes and I feel like we were already in the right direction and doing a lot of these things. So a buyer representation is what hires an agent to represent you as a home buyer. And I've always had my clients sign these at every brokerage we've been required to do so. So this is nothing new. In this agreement, it will specify the area that we're searching for homes in. It'll specify how long we're going to be working together. Um, and then it will also show how we're getting paid. So now there is a fee that will be explicit again in a box. <laughs> so everything will be highlighted and bold in a box related to compensation. There was a paragraph very similar to this previously in this um, agreement but now it's just emphasized so you actually see it. And what it says is we can say, okay, we're gonna charge a certain percentage for our fees if you buy a home, or we just want a flat fee for helping you purchase a home. So that is also negotiable. It depends again on the quality of service that you want. There are people that will just, you go find the home yourself, we'll write a contract, but we don't do anything else for you. There's full service agents where you're doing all kinds of consultations, guidance, helping them find the right neighborhood, the home, the negotiations, the inspections. And I call myself an agent for life, meaning even after you buy the home, I'm helping you. If you want to, you know, do repairs, updates, I've got contacts. You need help protesting your taxes. I've got resources to help you. So we consider ourselves agents, not just to get the, the purchase done, but to help you as a resource for as long as you own that home. 
So in there, again, it is negotiable depending on the level of service and the qualifications that that agent is providing and offering to you. Now, the source of compensation is also spelled out. So this is the same as it's always been. It says the broker will seek to obtain payment for the fees, meaning the, the compensation that they're asking first from the seller or their agents. So anytime there's a home for sale, now that it doesn't say what the amount is on the MLS, I'm gonna call and say, hey, is, your, is the seller offering any kind of compensation for agents? And they might say, well, they're only offering this amount or whatever, but bring an offer. So my job is to write an offer that is compelling, reason with them, but also get my fees negotiated within that offer so that the seller is covering those fees so that the buyer is not paying for it as an additional cash out of pocket fee at closing. I've done over 200 transactions. This has always been the case. I've never had to have a client come up with a bunch of money. Some examples where that could have happened would be an off market sale. Um, I've had instances where a client was looking in a specific neighborhood. So we just contacted homeowners. I've even door knocked and tried to see if anyone was willing to sell their home. Sometimes you might find someone that's like, okay, I'm willing to sell, but I'm not paying any commissions. In which case I would let my client know, Hey, if you want this home, they're willing to sell it, but you know, they're looking for a certain price and we would have to cover all the closing costs, including commissions. It's up to my client to decide if that's a good deal, if they want to do it or if they want to move on to something else. So this is no different, honestly, than negotiating anything else, closing costs, concessions, um, lower price or whatever. It's just part of it. And it is our job to try to get that negotiated on your behalf so that it's not an expense that you're paying for. But these terms have always been in our buyer representation agreement that we've used for years. Now it's just more explicit on how the compensation and fees are paid. So we don't show homes without telling you, you know, in advance, um, here's what's being offered. So you fully understand, you know, wh what the costs are. We are not going to just have you sign a contract and then all of a sudden you're, you're surprised at the end. What do you mean I have to pay this fee? Even in the contract, it's very explicit on how the broker agents are being paid and who's paying it. So don't feel like you're going to, you know, write an offer in a home and then hit, be hit with a surprise. It's all very explicit and very transparent throughout the process. It is our goal to ask for that compensation from the seller, from the brokerage or new construction. We do lots of new construction. The builders all around here offer compensation. So that is really nothing new to us at all. The big change, and this is what I would say is the biggest thing on the buyer side is when this form has to be signed because normally I, and I feel the same way. I don't like signing a form, um, agreeing to something if I don't really know the person or trust them that well. So I kind of look at, look at it as, um, getting to know someone like you're dating someone, you kind of want to get to know them first to make sure you actually like them <laughs> before you get into some kind of relationship. But the new ruling, what are the settlement statement is that agents cannot even show a home to anyone. It's against the rules. I could get fined. I could potentially lose a license if I'm violating these rules. I have to have a buyer representation signed before I can even show a home to someone. Now this is where it's a little different because like I said, I usually I've never had any issue. Every client I've ever worked with has happily signed this. They know I'm going to take good care of them. They know, um, how I work and they value what I do. So this is different because usually I will, I might talk to someone first. They might say, Hey, I'd like to see this home. I go show it to them. And after we get to know each other, we do end up, you know, deciding to work together and signing this form. Now we got to come to the agreement first before, you know, in some cases we've even met in person. So that can feel awkward. That's like meeting someone online. Perhaps you're watching my YouTube channel and you're like, Hey, I'd like her to show us some homes. Well, now we got to sign this commitment first without really getting to know each other up front. So to make it, you know, less awkward and a little more comfortable for everyone, we are willing to do just a short time frame. So if you're like, I just want to look at a couple homes tomorrow. I'm, I'm not sure yet. I'm kind of interviewing different agents. We can do a one day agreement that way I'm in compliance with these terms and the settlement agreement. I'm not violating anything. I'm not going to get fined. I'm not going to get in trouble, but we could do a short little temporary trial run to see how we work together 
if we if you like working with me which i hope you do you like working with my husband and i both um, we can sign a longer term if we actually agree to move forward and continue looking at homes but that's probably the biggest change on the buyer side is that this form is now required before i can even show you a house and like I said beforehand, we always sign these. It might just be a little later down the process once we get to know each other. So some other solutions is let's do a Zoom call, let's do a phone call, let's really answer your questions so you feel 100% working with us. But if not, we're ready to do a short like one day trial run to help you just you know get a feel for what it's like to work with us as a team. So those are the two big changes on the listing side and the buyer side and the ultimate goal is transparency so everyone knows how the agents are being compensated and also for more flexibility when it comes to negotiating the services and the fees that are being paid and offered so i am excited about these changes we are 100 percent prepared for them and ready to deliver the best service for you possible um, something you do also need to keep in mind because more than ever, it's so crucial to hire an expert agent is to know how many sales has the agent that you're, you're talking to, how many sales have they done in the last year? How many on the buy side, how many on the listing side, what are their stats as far as like negotiating, as far as getting the best price on the listing or the best, you know, negotiating skills on the buy side. It's super important. We have almost 20,000 agents in Austin and the stats from last year was about 50% of them sold one home or less. There was a huge amount that didn't even sell any homes at all. So, so many people have their license. It's honestly pretty easy to get a license, but to actually be a full-time real estate agent is one of the hardest jobs. Um, it takes a lot of skill and you really need to be in the business full time to succeed. So before you hire anyone, ask some of those questions about their experience, how in the business are they? And what also services are they offering? Because like I said, someone might sell your home for a lot less than another agent's asking, but ask, what are you offering for that amount? What do I get for that amount? Not just, oh, this person's cheaper. What are they offering? And the same on the buyer side, what do you offer? How do you help me as a buyer? ask those questions and that will help you to ultimately make the right choice now if you have certain questions for us you can contact me directly using our links below in the caption but also just check out our page i'm glad you're here check out our other videos and learn more about home buying in austin